Hello, and welcome to Casual Buddhism. I'm your host, Cindy Rossico, author of Finding Venerable Mother, and we're joined every week, as always, with Venerable Dhammananda Piccani, Thailand's first fully ordained Theravada nun. And Sarah is back with us. Let me just say a brief word about Sarah. She's a certified meditation teacher, a life coach in training, and writer, and how was, I'm just curious, Sarah, how is the life coach and training coming? I'm uh, doing a virtual self-paced program. So um, I'm actually um, starting a mindfulness coach training. Oh, this time, yes. Oh, wonderful. And are you still writing for Elephant Journal? To be honest, I've taken a little bit of a hiatus because um, I'm going through a lot of uh, complex changes let's just say in short sure, so sure good um, I'm kind of waiting to be um I yeah I guess a little bit more saturated by these uh -huh. changes so that I can write something with a little bit more substance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well welcome back and what thoughts do you have for us today well I'm going to start this off actually uh, with a little bit of self-disclosure so for a long time, um, you know, the, the ego, the mind was a little bit attached to this idea of, um, let's say, becoming a, you know, an, an author and a life coach with a certain mission. And I noticed that um, I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to, um, to get all these certifications and to take in all of this knowledge so that I could better help other people. But something struck me one day, I realized that um, in this pursuit of knowledge and this pursuit of um, titles and certifications that I was clinging to something, I was clinging to some sort of an identity that I felt I did not already possess. And then I realized, you know what, one day I could lose all of this. I will die one day. Um, mm. I could have something happen where I couldn't practice anymore and I have to come to terms with, um, impermanence and the fact that, you know, I already am whole and complete. I don't need wow. an identity to complete me. And I was realizing that I was doing a lot of things for what I thought were the wrong reasons. Mm. So I guess um, it brought me to contemplate impermanence quite a bit. So my question is, in a world where change is guaranteed and death and inevitable, how can we as humans who resist death and change come to more gracefully accept impermanence? You know, yesterday, Sarah, yesterday I was talking to a professor. Uh, he was teaching at the same university as I myself, but he was teaching in the faculty of business. Uh, but he's writing, he's writing a book trying to connect between science and, and uh, 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 mental training. But yesterday we shared something very interesting. He is having, he had, he had problem with his brain and uh, suddenly you know he could not walk properly and eventually his friend who was at the same place with him noticed that something must be wrong with him so his friend a doctor uh, took him to the hospital had him in mri and go through that to find that there was there was lot blood between his brain cell and the skull so he had to be operated immediately so i shared with him my experience of having the tit the mind, the sati, consciousness, and sati sampachanya, the, the being, aware, be, being aware of my total existence here and now, and the body. I have all that, but that time I fainted, and as I, I was conscious. I fainted, but I was conscious. But Sarah, I could not lift my arm. Mm. This lifting my arm, how, how do you lift your arm? You know, we never ask this question because we always lift our arm. But that was the moment that really took me to a point of understanding or accepting that even though I have my consciousness, 
I will to lift my arm, but I could not. Mm. So there is something that I do not have a proper understanding between the mind and the brain, how the mind and the brain functions, and how the brain functions with the nerve. Buddhist text talks a great deal about the mind, training the mind to be free of suffering. But the fact that I have the mind, I have the awareness, I have the consciousness, but I could not lift my arm. You see how impermanent it is? And that happened within two minutes. You know, when I fainted, I was conscious all the time, but yet I could not control my body. The mind is there, the body is there. Total consciousness of myself was there, but I could not lift my arm. A very simple action of lifting my arm. So this is, this is impermanence, impermanence in the present. And to realize that it is so important that we come back to this present moment. So as just earlier, before we came into this session, I mentioned to you that my adopted son is being snowbound in, in Canada. You know, he was kind of worried and, and uh, restless. So I told him just simply be, mm -hmm. simply be, you know, simply be. I think it's very important that we as a pra practitioner, each one of us, we are practitioner and Sarah, uh, I am sure you are a very serious practitioner to have this certified meditation teacher who certified you. Nobody can certify you better than yourself. Mm. To be a life coach. I came coach. to realize that. Yes. 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 To be a life coach. Coaching whom? Let us coach ourselves. You know, life coach in Thailand, we do have this life coach. And then finally, he ended up in a very, uh, how to say, notorious way of getting involved in money and all kind of thing you know so the word life coach is a is a how to say is a no no word for us for, for a certain period of time because of this uh, uh, scandal to come back to ourselves and we know best just now, just before you came in, we talk about another person that maybe sometimes, you know, the shadow of the ego looms even larger than the ego itself. Mm. So this is very much has to do with our practice, our practice. So I'm, I'm very happy as you come in and we, it allows us to open up this space to talk about it. I think the person who really seeks a life coach could feel that you will be the one who can guide him or can guide her without having to be certified by others. Right. That is only a paper, Sarah. It's only yes. a paper. And you get into this system, you know, uh, you, are all, all, you are also being controlled by, by this whole, whole system to be truly practicing as a person who is practicing, whether you can teach, you can guide, you can coach others or not, depending not only on you, but also on the other person. Yes, yes. It's, and I realized that um, I was obtaining a lot of these certifications um, because I felt a sense of lack within myself. And I really had to look at that and realize that what am I lacking and according to whom? So I, I decided to relinquish a lot of the things that I was doing. Yes, yes. Actually. Slowly allow yourself to be more sure. And this life coach could be felt by others without having to be certified. But right. of course, because because we live in this modern world, you know, of, of having to be, how to say, uh, value you have to be value by all this certified paper so to say i have been through that myself you know uh, to get all these papers you know to get all the papers to say that you are uh, you have completed your phd but to have completed phd or not my knowledge is more or less the same mm. yes we we can assure ourselves and we can continue, even though with a PhD, 
certificate, it does not mean that your knowledge is worthy of PhD. I have met some people who are supposed to be PhD so and so, but uh, still, still, we need to pursue. It, it, it is a lifelong pursuit, you know, to understand the teaching of, of the Buddha, to understand uh, how we can settle with our mind. Yes, keep on, Sarah. Keep on. I think you are. The fact that you stop and think that is a real, a real message for yourself. For yourself. Yes. I realized that um, experience was a much better teacher than anything else could possibly be. Yes, yes. And whether you work, you, you can work with, with the one who's supposed to be, to be your, your student or, or the one who come and seek for this, uh, what you call life coach. That person, it, it, it's a he or it's a she, doesn't matter. But he or she will benefit from you or not, not only it is because you are certified, but it is also because he or she himself is ready for it, to be guided or not. It, mm -hmm. it goes both ways, you know. So it does not mean that if he or she comes to you in spite of the fact that, that you are being certified life coach, how come that that person feels that it does not work with him, it does not work with her, you know. So it, it has to go both ways. It has to go both ways. And here Buddhism talks about punya, uh, what you have done in the past, the Buddha said that he could not teach everyone. Mm. See, even the Buddha said that he could not teach everyone. It has to depend on the merit, the previous merit that they have had as student and as a teacher. Yes. Some some of these monks, you know, they came around, they are Mola, Mokalana's disciples. They don't respect the Buddha. Only Mokalana the senior disciple had to tell them, look, this is my teacher. You see, that happens even in the Buddha's time. Mm. Mm. So don't worry. Don't worry, Sarah, you're on the right path. The fact that you can question, you can stop, and you can think about this, you are already on the right path. Thank you so much. I feel so much more free now than I did before, actually, yeah. since I had that realization, I have to say. It's been about a couple of weeks now, yeah. and I, I can feel myself again. It's nice. Wonderful. You look, you look really good. <laughs> thank you. So do yes. you, Cindy. Oh, thank and you. so do you, Don Amanda. Yeah. Well, um, this is, I think we come to a close here. It's very... Very for the session, for this session. session, not for the live session. Not for the life, not for the life of the session. So thank you very much, Venerable, and thank you, Sarah. Thank and, you. Um, keep on thriving because you look great. Take care. Sati, sati, sati. Thank you.